Hello and welcome to Archaeologists Anonymous. I am your host, Sean Silvio, and today's topic is the Greco-Roman style temples in Egypt, specifically the Serapeum and the Caesareum. So, when the Greeks, then the Romans, controlled Egypt, they actually built a lot of temples that continue to be in the native Egyptian style. They basically look like any other Egyptian temples built before Greece and Rome controlled Egypt. But, did they have any temples that looked like the DC War Memorial behind me here? This sort of Greco-Roman style temple that we're familiar with? Well, yes they did. Yes. Yes. Yeah! One example of a Greek-style temple is the Serapeum, built in Alexandria over 2,000 years ago in the 3rd century BC. The Serapeum was said to be the most beautiful and humongous temple in all of the Greek quarter of Alexandria. You're breathtaking! The Serapeum, naturally, was dedicated to the god Serapis. The god Serapis was actually a combination of gods. You had Osiris, the native ancient Egyptian god of resurrection and the afterlife, and you also had the sacred bull god Apis. So you have Osiris Apis, you know, Cyrus Apis, Serapis. You could see where Serapis comes from. And this composite god actually introduced a few others. You know, sometimes it'd be, you know, Zeus would be in there, and sometimes different gods. And Serapis would be depicted as this old guy with a giant beard. Your beard is such a part of your face these days. You're so associated uh, with that thing. Well, thank you. Speaking of bull gods, there's actually a large underground section of the Serapeum with a bunch of burials of sacred statues of Bulls. The temple would actually get a lot of these sacred bull donations from patrons, and they got so many that they didn't really know what to do with them, so they just sort of buried them under the temple. This sort of burial of offerings because you don't quite know what to do with them, but they're holy so you can't destroy them, happens a lot throughout the ancient Roman world. Archaeologists love finding these burial pits because we get some nice ancient statues that have been undisturbed because they've been buried for thousands of years. Anyways, back to the Serapeum specifically. This Greek-style temple was actually located right next to the Library of Alexandria and housed an offshoot of its collection. I checked this out weeks ago, forbidden light reading. This is light. It was basically like an offshoot branch of the library. On the site of the Serapeum, we've actually found a lot of statue fragments, which means that it's likely that it was decorated with tons and tons of statuary. Unfortunately, not much is left of the Serapeum besides scraps and these underground tunnels. And this is because in 391 AD, there were huge riots between Christians and pagans about the religious conflict, and these riots culminated in the Christian destruction of the pagan Serapeum. That's a lot of damage! So this is quite the dramatic ending for what ancient authors described as the most magnificent temple in Alexandria. Okay, so let's talk about a different interesting Greco-Roman style temple in Alexandria, the Caesareum. It wasn't just the ancient Egyptians that built temples to their dead rulers, the ancient Romans adopted this practice as well when they went into the imperial era. The temple was actually originally planned by Cleopatra, yes, THE Cleopatra, in order to honor her first lover, Julius Caesar. But Caesar was assassinated, and the empire descended into civil war between Octavian, Caesar's adopted son, and Mark Antony. The Caesareum was only finished after the fact by Octavian, who was now emperor, after he beat Mark Antony. Some archaeologists actually think that the finished Caesareum became dedicated to Augustus himself. So it's possible that Augustus totally stole his adopted father's temple. I'm gonna do what's called a pro gamer. Later on, the Caesareum was Christianized and turned into a church, but not much, if any of it, really survives. Except for two obelisks, one of which was taken to Central Park and the other of which was taken to London. So there are actually some wild stories about the transport of these obelisks, especially the one to London. The Brits actually built wood around the obelisk to basically turn it into its own boat of sorts. And they pulled this obelisk boat across the sea to take it back to London. 
but then they got hit by a storm and the obelisk boat started sort of crashing and rolling through the waves and they couldn't control it so they were forced to cut it loose so that it wouldn't sink their ship so they lost this thousands of years old obelisk at sea and they thought it was potentially destroyed and gone forever hey Gunjali, let's oh. But, a few days later, some Spanish sailors recovered it off the coast of Spain. When the Brits wanted to get it back, though, the Spanish government charged them 2,000 pounds, which is just under half a million dollars of today's money. I want 50% of your plunder. 15. 40. 25. The other obelisk that went to Central Park actually suffered a lot of wear and tear because New York weather was a lot harsher on the obelisk than the drier weather in Egypt. The Egyptian Antiquities Authority actually got mad and forced them to take better care of the obelisk and to do some preservation work to fix the damage that had been done. It would have been a tragedy if those hieroglyphs on the obelisk were worn completely away. So yeah, a lot of drama surrounding Greco-Roman temples in Egypt. Caught up in drama! You know, destroyed by Christians, obelisks lost at sea, or the obelisk at Central Park having the hieroglyphs almost worn completely away before someone stepped in to fix it. So yeah, that's a brief introduction to the Greco-Roman temples in Egypt. In some, there were absolutely temples that looked like the Supreme Court behind me. In ancient Greek and Roman Egypt. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Sean Silvio of Archaeologist Anonymous. Don't forget to like, subscribe, watch another video, and I'll see you on the next one. The temple's pretty strong. First it's filled with Greeks and then Romans come along. The temple's pretty strong. Until some Christians come along and pull it down. God house. Put in Egypt by the Greeks. God house. Put in Egypt by the Greeks.